Hey there guys, Zach here from WinBeta, and welcome to episode number 43 of the WinBeta podcast for the week of December 4th, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> With me is co-host Sean Michael. Hey there, Sean. Hey there, guys. And this week we have a number of stories, mostly the usual, Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, but we've also got a couple of uh, new devices to play with. We have the Lumia 950 XL and the Lumia 550, as well as a Continuum dock, which I actually have down here. So there's... Wait, how many Continuum docks, Zach? <laughs> More than one, <laughs> which is interesting, because I'll explain how I managed to obtain two later in the podcast. But yes, I have uh, two Continuum docks now. Uh, yeah, so Windows to Mobile, we were talking about rumoured Surface phones, as there was a report released on that this week. Why Verizon isn't carrying the Nokia Lumia 10. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay, we'll get, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait, sorry. I'll wait for that one. Yeah, all the way down to things like Windows RT running on a phone, which I think is pretty impressive indeed. But yes, so how have you been, Sean, this week? It's, you know, it's been an all right week. Yeah. Y- you, not like you, I mean... I had to ask you before. I said, "Hey, Mister Big, Mister Microsoft, you got time to do a podcast?" <laughs> and I said, "No." You going to all these events, getting invited to things left and right. Maybe I should move to London. Well, I mean, <laughs> it is cool down here in London. But yes, no, <laughs> I had a very busy week this week. Uh, the Lumia, the new Lumia hand, well, the nine fifty, and I guess the five fifty, although that wasn't there at the event, was uh, was launched this week in the UK, and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, the five, well, what happened at the event, I should talk about the events first. Microsoft invited me to two events on a Wednesday. The first event was a hands-on experience with all Microsoft products, uh, it, their latest products. So it was the Surface Pro 4, a bunch of uh, third-party OEM devices, the new Lumias, uh, Continuum for phones, Xbox, you know, all that fancy stuff. They had, like, cool new monitors there and stuff. But it was a very interesting experience. It, was, it wasn't just a room that you walk into and there's just tables of devices to play with. It was... Uh, an interactive experience. That, the fact that there were actors, that there was a whole building, and they took. But it's f- like this podcast, very interactive. Very the interactive. Fans. There were actors there. They were playing different characters, and we had to finish tasks. We, we was in a group of with other people, and we had to finish tasks and work together. And uh, the key device to the whole sort of play, I guess, was the 950XL, and we had to record certain things with the camera on the 950XL, which was hilarious because there's a weird bug with Windows 10 that if you lock the phone and try to press the camera button, sometimes it doesn't launch the camera, and everyone's like, the camera's not launching, but we have to swipe it and and, and lock the phone to actually get it to work sometimes. So a few technical glitches, a continuum for, the Continuum for Phones demo that showed us kind of had a few glitches as well, being that it's, um, it took a little while to get to the video they were trying to play. Um... Yeah, but other than that, it was actually really, really fun. Uh, I actually I had, I had a go at the um, new Mozo cases as well, because they had the Mozo cases there, which was very nice indeed. And yes, it was super, super fun. Are you um, going to buy one of the Mozo cases? <coughs> I've already bought one, yeah. Okay. Just uh, take yeah. a bit to get there, I assume. Yeah, so yeah, that was very fun. And then on the same day, later that evening, on the Wednesday, Microsoft was holding a launch party for the 950 and the 950 XL, which is quite funny because I asked the people at the event in the day when the new devices were launching, and they were like, I don't know. <laughs> we have no idea. We've not been given a day. I was like, well, um, maybe it's tonight, maybe. <laughs> so yes, I got in line at around 5.50 p.m. on the same day. I'd been walking around for hours on it, and I think I've taken the most steps that day. Uh, well, you should much, check with your um, band, too. I did check. It was like 15,000 steps or something. I don't remember. A lot of steps, um, but yeah, we I did some line up. I met some Windows Insiders, uh, which was also very fun. Now <laughs> we were. It turned out me and me and these two insiders were all in the were all in the line for the same reason. We weren't there to like, celebrate or um, to have a go on the devices like at the desks and stuff. We were there to buy the devices straight away, and that's what we did. So we were we were fairly close to the front of the line. The line did stretch around a corner and really far down the street. So we were kind of early, I guess. We got in there, we went straight to the bit where you order your Lumia 950. Now, their process of ordering the device there was very interesting. You'd expect to just have the money in your hand, walk up to a till, give the person the money, and they hand over the things. That's not how it worked here. You have to find somebody carrying a Surface 3. <laughs> then you ask them if uh, that you'd like to buy the device. Then they ask you what device you want, the five, uh, the 950 or the 950 XL. You tell but them. Not the 550, then you though choose it was a Lumia event. You choose a color, and weirdly, the white version was cheaper than the black 950. So the black 950 was uh, 47999, and the white one was 46499, which was very interesting. I chose the white one. Only I would I was going to get the white one anyway, but since it was cheaper, I thought that was a bargain as well. Um, 
so yeah, then you then they sign you up for a an account at mobilephonesdirect.co.uk, I believe. So it wasn't through Microsoft. This was happening through a third party retailer, which I'm guessing Microsoft signed a, uh, a deal with of kind. So I don't know what was going on there, but the process was a little bit clunky. Like the Surface 3 was struggling to render web pages on Edge because they were using Edge and that. And the people who were actually um, using the Surface 3s I don't believe we're actual Microsoft employees. They didn't really know how to use the devices. So at some point, I just went, do you want me to, I'll, I'll handle it. And I just took it and, and did all the typing and stuff. They wanted credit card details, all that stuff, sign into account, whatever else. Zach now working for Microsoft yeah. at this point. He <laughs> says, just... look, I'm going to buy the phone. I'm going to ring up the phone. I'm just going to run the event. You want a display? I'll yeah. show you how Continuum works. I'll just do this right here. Give me a little hat. I'll be, I'll be Roper. I, I can do this. Yeah, and it was... Uh... Very interesting. Then finally, uh, got to the the front of the desk. It took about twenty minutes for them to actually give it over because they had to write down the IMEI number and all that long stuff. Then they handed it over, and as I turned away to just walk away, the queue was millions of miles long <laughs> for to buy a device. And I thought to myself, "Well, isn't that lucky? <laughs> I got mine first, so I didn't have to wait in that long." Because it took once you actually put the order in. It took a while for them to actually get it to you. The process, like I said, was very interesting and not the way I would have done it. But, oh well. What's, who's a jerk, Sean? Why are, you t- why are you calling the people jerks? Oh, no, in the comment. I'll, I'll get to it later. Okay. So, yeah, that was the, <laughs> that was my very busy Wednesday. Uh, so, yes, and the result of that Wednesday was a new Lumia 950 XL, which I now have in my hands, which is a very nice device. Now, I know people have been saying, reviews have said it's a cheap-feeling device. I disagree. It's not a cheap feeling device. It's just not as premium feeling as one would expect. This doesn't feel like a Lumia 435. <laughs> it's I hold this in my hands and I and it it doesn't ring cheap, put it that way. The 550, which I received today, uh is a cheap device. It's £89 pounds on a uh, Carphone Warehouse. Uh it's glossy plastic on the back. Probably hear it. It also doesn't feel that cheap. It's a cheap phone and it does ring cheap compared to the 950 XL, but it also doesn't feel the cheapest. I, I, I would say the 640 XL feels a little bit cheaper than this. I don't know why. Maybe because uh, it's glossy. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know, but it's very nice feeling in the hand. It's a HD 4.7 inch screen, which looks very crisp because it's 4.7 inches. So uh, HD operates absolutely fine on a device uh, on a screen this size. And uh, it's very snappy. For Snapdragon 210, this is actually performing pretty well. The 950XL, I mean, you've probably read all the rooms anyway, super fast. The Windows phone to buy if you're a Windows phone fan, all that good stuff. So I'm not going to dive too much into it. Can, can I ask you a few questions about the devices, Zach? Sure. So with the 950, you, you, you and I were talking offline, how, how does it feel in the hand compared to the 1520 and the 930? Because people are going to be asking, these are things, some people are ordering this online, and they probably aren't going to be able to hold it in hand, just like you might buy a service book having never touched one before. So how would you compare it in terms of like feel, size, shape, whatever? It's it's, it's very interesting, because it is plastic. You feel the, feel the plastic when you hold it in your hand. But the buttons, you usually, when you hold it on the phone, you can usually feel the buttons. The buttons are a little bit sharp, because they're metal. And that I guess that would add to the premium feeling. The, sc- the screen on the front isn't plastic, it's glass. So that also adds to the premium. But the polycarbonate plastic isn't shiny, it's matte. And I think that doesn't feel bad. Like lots of people are like, matte is a horrible feeling. Folk, not really. I don't really... It actually feels quite nice. And it looks but, awesome in white. It just You just want to bite it. <laughs> would you say it's smooth? or would, it's, it's, it's smooth. It feels very it's, smooth. And like I said, it doesn't feel cheap, like many people have been saying. It, it's... Not, it doesn't feel super premium, but it's not a cheap feeling device. It's kind of just a normal Lumia handset. It's like, I mean, you're not, you're not going to be expecting anything else. It's very nice to hold. And as, as I said on Twitter, I think it's good enough until the Surface phone. Yeah, so a lot of people are, are going to be asking things like, how, is this device a real flagship or is it worth actually getting? Would, would you say this is worth? I mean, this is a pretty expensive phone. I was say it, 600 quid? Getting. Six. You said I mean, it was for what? the next two years... Oh, uh, well, for because usually most people get their phones on contract, and the contract is usually two years. If you're getting the 950 or 950X on contract, I'm not entirely sure what I'd say, because the Surface phone is next year, and that will be, which we'll be talking more about in a little bit, actually, and that will be the phone you want, and you will feel extremely jealous um, when you're holding your polycarbonate 950, and everyone's getting a... Um, a nice surface phone. Yeah, a with... surface phone. But at the same time, there's always a newer device. There will always be a newer device. Yeah. Every year, Microsoft will release a new high-end device. Well, hopefully from this point onwards, Apple does it. 
Google does it. It's common practice. You well, remember, buy... it used to be like a two-year life cycle. Well, not anymore. It's not been for ages. Long, but, Apple, but now Apple, it's one. Yeah, Apple started the trend of every year. Uh, so there will be... these days you have to buy a device knowing there will always be a better device in the future. So if you're... Like I said, a Windows Phone fan will likely want to get this. This is the best Lumia you can buy right now. And that's just that's, that's hands down the truth. This is the best Lumia you can buy. It's better than the 930. The 930 was a great device, don't get me wrong. But the 950 tops it. And it's very, very nice. It's just a, it's an overall a great experience. Windows 10, the software, may be a little bit buggy here and there. But I, I'm sure that will be ironed out eventually. And once you own the device, you own it forever. So you may not... You may buy this device and find it the best device in the world. And when the Surface phone rolls around, you might not want it straight away because you just think your 950XL is perfect the way it is. One of the insiders I met at the event uh, was still carrying a Lumia 820. There you go. And he was upgrading from an 820 to the 950. And he, that device came out, I guess, 2012. And for him, it's probably actually worth getting because it's a substantial yeah, increase. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't get the XL. He got the standard 950, which is understandable. Right. He prefers the smaller screen. So because the right. 820 had a 4.7 inch screen, I'm sure. So jumping from 4.7 to 5.2 is a little bit uh, of a jump. But it was, I mean, it's still an upgrade. And he was happy with his 820 for many years. If you're somebody who has to have the latest, of course, get this. If you're somebody who doesn't mind, you can, You, I think if you have got a 930, you could probably wait for the Surface phone. Mm-hmm. Was well, that I? You went to so you went through both events already. Just for time's sake, we probably need to move on, just because we have like five mobile stories just for this week. Okay. So, is there? But I didn't mean to cut you because I know you went to two events. Are there any other stories from the events? Uh not really. Not nothing too important. Nothing funny. Not acting really, wise no. or whatever. All right. I don't mean to cut you off. I just it's like Kanye. I, I don't mean to cut you off. You know, but sure. Sean's the best co-host of all we time. We have the after party to talk more about it if people want to. That's know. true. Yeah. If you have specific questions and stuff, obviously we want to get out there for everybody. But if you're joining us live, Jay Lance Party asked specific questions then. We have a ton of mobile news later in the show. We got one Windows 10 bit for now. And then we have um, five, I think, five Windows 10 mobile stories. Just briefly touch this here in, in terms of the non mobile stuff. Windows 10 regular, which uh, is still, it's going to get annoying to have to say that, <laughs> um, has hit, it's not like a milestone or anything. It's just like the latest report on their OS. It's hit 9%. Um, to be honest, it didn't. It's already passed iOS, or not iOS. I'm sorry, it already passed OS X. You know that, which is at six point nine eight. Every I think oh, every version of OS X is less than seven percent put together. So it's at nine percent market share. Its next hurdle to jump over is XP's at ten point five nine percent, eight point one, eight point one. There's still people clinging on to um, Windows eight point one because it's eleven point one five percent of the market share. And then, not surprisingly, Windows Seven is five point six, or five fifty six point one one. So let me ask you, Zach, what what does Microsoft have to do? I can understand people who are resistant to switch from Windows Seven. You know, I, I we talked about this last. I have a friend who was like, oh, you know, I'm on Seven. I'm hesitant to change because Seven works so well, that sort of thing. But are these like tablet users? You, you have ten percent of the market share, over ten percent, clinging on to Windows eight point one. Well, who do you think that is, and why do you think they're so resistant to changing? A lot of them will just be normal people who have not, um, you know, agreed to install Windows 10. Because people just don't. People, when they turn their... Like, installing an update is annoying for normal people. It's like, you turn your device on. If there's an update ready to go, you, you try to postpone that update for as long as possible because you don't want to install it. Because, you know, when you install an update... It installs, it restarts, and then usually when someone's t- installing an update, you turn your device off, and then when you wake up in the morning, it's like preparing to install update. And it's like, oh, I've wanted to get on my computer, but I can't. So people just try and put them off for as long as possible. Not only that, some people just don't, just just won't. They refuse. And yeah, Microsoft actually, yes. can't do anything about them, people. Unless yeah, they some... release an update that forcefully installs Windows 10 on every op- computer in the world, it's not going to happen. Oh, I'm sure they're tempted. Um, um, <laughs> there are lawsuits incoming, Microsoft, if that's the case. But yeah, Somebody's, no, that, um, yeah. that's the only way they could ever really do that. I'm sure, Windows, I'm sure there are still computers out there, maybe not connected to the internet, but still computers out there that run Windows 95. Well, Windows 8 is actually still at 2.88%. So not <laughs> Windows 8.1, but there are still people running Windows 8, which, trust me, look, I, I can understand if someone said, I use my device exclusively as a tablet, and I prefer Windows 8.1 tablet mode over Windows 10 tablet mode. I can understand that, honestly. I mean, I it's it's fine for me personally, but I've heard that complaint enough. But Windows 8, 
is worse than Windows 8.1 in so many ways for people to not make that jump. So I guess you're right. I think some people are just going to, yeah, I think people are just going to stick on the, on the latest version until they buy a new device that just comes with something else. Yeah, I mean, that's what most people, that's how most people upgrade. Honestly, that's yeah. how normal people upgrade. They just wait until they buy a new computer and whatever it comes with is what they run. But once they, here's the thing with Windows 10, once they buy a device with Windows 10, they are locked into that because Microsoft updates are automatic, automatic on Windows 10. That's so true, yeah. They don't have yeah, a choice yeah. at that point. It's just the bottlenecks up to everything before Windows 10. That's the bottleneck. Once everybody's off Windows 10, uh, off those older versions and onto Windows 10, Microsoft can release new versions and people will be updated to it eventually. So like the Redstone market, there won't in five years you won't see like Redstone is here and non Redstones. They're just gonna yeah, it's just Windows Ten, thin. and that's kind of my Windows goal. It's just Windows Ten everywhere, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, I can understand some people. I guess there's some features, but anyway, all right then. But that's about it for Windows Ten. We got like tons and tons of mobile news this week, though. Uh, first up, service phone, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, this is my story, isn't it? So, a report this week uh, from Windows Central, I believe, revealed that the Surface phone has been given the green light, which uh, is interesting because before this report, we knew that Microsoft was interested in making a Surface phone, and the original rumours claimed it would be happening in May. Now, the difference between those rumours and these rumours is that the rumoured Surface phone that was releasing in May uh, was less of a Surface phone and more of just an Intel-powered phone. Uh, so the branding was, nobody was sure on what the branding was and whatever else. And it, I th believe it was commissioned by a team that wasn't Surface originally. But whatever. Uh, now this report says that, that um, the, the device that was supposed to release in May 2016 has been cancelled. And Microsoft has been given the green, uh, Microsoft has given the Surface team the green light to actually build a Surface phone. And this is the team that builds Surface and Surface Book and whatever. This is the team that built those devices they are now building a phone, which is very exciting, very exciting indeed. It's an Intel-powered phone, much like the May 2016 cancelled smartphone. Uh, that's pretty much all they know about it, um, which is to be expected. It's quite early in development. Yeah, I mean, they probably, the people making it don't know everything about it. It's not like they're testing it. They're still making it. Yeah, uh, the Windows Center says this may be the long way for Surface Phone. Uh, so, I, be, I mean, since it's a Surface device, I imagine it will be built with the same materials that Surface is built with, the Surface tablets and I imagine the Surface book. And it will be the device Windows Phone people will likely want to get because it will be Surface. I mean, Surface is a much more respected brand uh, over, uh, across the globe than, um, well, not across, in, in a number of countries uh, compared to Lumia. So, I mean, in the UK, you can say Lumia's, you can talk to someone about Lumia, they'll know what Lumia is. They'll be like, oh, yeah, that's interesting, but they won't be like dying to buy one. In the US, you t you say Lumia to someone, they go, what's a Lumia? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what it was was when they bought Nokia, people recognized Nokia. They were like, oh, it's a Nokia phone. They, got, they were known for being tough and hard to break and whatever. And I think they tried to transition, because they could only use the Nokia name for so long. So they tried to transition people to recognizing Lumia the same way that they recognized Nokia, except they didn't. So yeah. now, if you call the Nokia Lumia, people would go, oh, okay, it's a Nokia. That means it's, it's well built. Yeah. But now it's like Lumia, and they go, I don't even know what that is. No. It doesn't have, it doesn't have the Nokia name, and it doesn't have the service name. So it's not attached to anything. Exactly. But and you, so, can, you can say to anybody... You know the surface, right? And there's a high chance they'll say, "Yeah, I know what a surface is." Perfect. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, surface. I believe the surface branding is the way to go for Windows 10 Mobile. Now, I said last. I believe I said it last week. Um, what did I say last week? The Windows 10, Microsoft's current Windows 10 Mobile strategy isn't a strong one, and that's kind of. The, I mean, they kind of know that. And right now, I believe they're mostly focusing on the desktop side and Hololens and Xbox, whatever else. Their Windows 10 Mobile efforts have slowed down. But that's not forever. That's just for the time being. Once Windows 10 is matured, I believe they have uh, a, they will come back strong. And with hardware, hardware is a major, you know, a major player in that comeback. As is the software and feature set. Microsoft is playing. It's still playing catch up, pretty much. Not the hardware now, the 950XL, minus the the polycarbonate. The insides are, you know, one of the top notch, you know, top spec phones you can get. But they're their full vision of Windows 10 Mobile hasn't been realized just yet, I don't think. And no, I don't think it I, will for at least another year. Unfortunately, because we always say this, you know, soon, soon, coming soon, you know, yeah. etc. But honestly, with this one, it really, it, we're kind of laying the groundwork and they're going to keep 
like life support, you know, get the defibrillator out. They're going to keep life support for the Windows 10 mobile platform. They're going to keep pushing apps because, you know, by the, by the time the service phone or whatever they call it, I, right now I think internally they're calling it Panos's phone after Panos Panay. Um, and so, you know, by the time that rolls out, you could have two, they're going to push the app platform, say 200 million users, because by then who knows if, how many it'll be. But yeah, I think you're right. This kind of, yeah, we're, we're having to wait. It's too bad. I, yeah. I wish it was here sooner, but yeah. What do you think? How about we how about we link the the poll in now cuz the poll is on the service phone then we'll we'll jump to the next one after that. We actually had a poll this week on the service phone asking what would you like to see most on a service phone? And the four options are stylus support, support for Win32 apps, a kickstand, and being branded the Surface Phone, so as opposed to calling it like the Lumia, whatever nine sixty or nine whatever they they'd call it the Surface Phone or Lumia Surface or whatever something like that, and um, so we had almost a thousand votes this week, and surprisingly, I was actually a bit surprised by the results. Number one result, well let me well I was, number one result, forty seven percent of people said Win thirty two apps. They said for it to be the best phone, whatever, it's going to have to support those apps. Closely followed by being called the Surface Phone, 25%. Stylus supported 22%. And the strong 5% said that a kickstand was more important than anything else. More important than Win32. More important than being called the Surface Phone. More important than, than anything else like a stylus. They said it has to have a kickstand. Which I can actually understand somewhat. Because Surfaces have kickstands. I have a question about that. Yeah. In what orientation? Uh, like a picture frame. I think, either way. How would they? How well, they could? You reckon that could? Ha- they could have a kickstand that can be both sides. Uh, picture frames do it, so I'm assuming that's what. Like uh, you know, they. Oh, open I guess kind- so. Yeah, but that wouldn't be. I mean, a kickstand would be designed differently, then, right? That'd be more like a. I don't know. Maybe. I would think they have to do it that way, where it's like the little diag. It opens yeah, yeah, a little yeah. diagonally, and it's at a point where you can do it either. I mean, like I said, they do it for picture frames. It doesn't. No, you're right. You are. Right. They'd have to make it more elegant to make it look good on a phone. But if you buy like a rugged case now, like with a kickstand for a Lumia device. They usually have that style where it's pointed. And You're right. Up. Yes, I didn't even think about that. Good call. Cool. Yeah. yeah, but what do you think, Zach? What do you think is the most important out of those four options? I think the branding. Really more so. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah. I, no, to be fair, I think branding and the Win32 thing will continue and comes hand in hand. You're buying a Surface device. I know the Surface RT and the Surface 2 are kind of ironic in this instance. but Which one is in the background right now, actually? Yeah, the Surface 2 surface boxes box. right there, yeah. But yeah, people are buying a Surface device because it can run desktop apps. Right. Yeah, I think if you got to a point where they said this Surface phone, I don't think Win32 apps are going to work on a, on a scaled down device, on like a phone phone. But if they said you can run any program you want through this phone when it's using Continuum, I honestly think it could sell well. Because you're saying by that it probably priced pretty high. It probably priced at minimum what the 950 XL is, if not more. So you're looking at like a 700, 600, you know, device. Is it? What does it cost? What's the 950 XL cost? You said the XL 529 from Microsoft. But and that's pound though, right? Yeah, pounds. Yeah. So I mean, it's getting up there in dollars. But if you said this could replace your PC, sure, whatever. I agree. I think the kickstand is probably important. The design's important. Like you said, it's got to look like a Surface. They can't just. And that's probably why um, they've shied away from it so long. You can't just have a Lumia and say this is a Surface phone because it has to look and feel like a You don't want to hurt the Surface Pro 4's reputation with a bad phone. That's not fair to the Surface Pro 4. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there's that. I don't know. Comment section, let us know what you think as well. You know, What do you think? Most important thing for a Surface phone. But yeah, that's about it for that. Um, I just move on. <laughs> in the funniest story of the week, Zach. Possibly. So it, we've talked about this before. Here in England, you don't have to be ashamed to have a Windows phone. And when you go to EE and you said like a phone, they don't show you an iPhone and a Galaxy and then laugh at you when you ask about something else. But in that country where I was born and raised, America, they do. <laughs> People. There's just it's just not the same. I've been to you know stores and many people have been to stores where you know you ask about a Windows phone and they kind of look at you funny or they say that they hate it or they try to talk you out of it or whatever. And one of the companies, this is you know I don't know if the company as a whole. I'm not accusing them like that, but 
my experience with Verizon and some of the history that's been on record with Verizon is they have not fully supported the Windows Phone platform, now, in my I, opinion. Just before you continue the story, I must c- clarify so you know. Uh, the reason Verizon isn't carrying the 950, 950XL 950 is mostly Microsoft's fault. No, that's what the story is. Yeah, no, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Is So when it, when it came out that the Lumia 950 was exclusive to AT&T, people got pretty upset. And some person went, I think, to the FCC and tried to, like, report Verizon. And they said, like, hey, they can't ban this phone. If it has the correct radios in it, they're not allowed to ban it or whatever. And their response was basically, why not? Like, so everybody assumed that, like, Verizon had this big vendetta against Microsoft because a mixed result with how they sold the icon and that sort of thing. But it wasn't them. And Microsoft basically came out and said, yeah, you know, we decided to do this route with AT&T and then sell the other two unlocked. And I think that's a really bad idea. There's, this, there's this whole monopoly of carriers in America. I think it's a joke. I honestly think it's it's ridiculous. Like I was tweeting about, I was complaining about this on Twitter. I complained a lot about it. But in the UK, you can walk into any carrier store uh, with an unlocked phone, ask them for a SIM with that carrier, and that phone will work. In the US, I was I assumed it works in the same in the US. Apparently not. In the US, dep- you can have an unlocked phone, but depending on the carrier you want to run it on, it may not work because of the technology it uses, CDMA versus whatever the other one is, GSM or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. I think it's Sprint. I think Sprint and Verizon use CDMA. But here's the thing. So, what is what? What do UK carriers use? Is it using an, an entire different technology, or is it just one technology for all of us over here? I couldn't tell you. I, I know. I, I agree. When I came here, the care it's completely different. Like, it, it's to the point in the states where it's like, what carrier you're on actually affects things. Here, it's just I want cell phone service, and you're like, okay, a gift gap is cheap and reliable. This other one is more reliable but more expensive. Gift Gap sends X text messages telling them he's nice or yes, whatever. Okay. You know, and, and but but that's it. It's not it's not a you know, it's some of different deals. You could have got the Microsoft band one for thirty two pound this week if you had uh O two. And so they're like deals and stuff, and that makes sense. They're businesses. But, but yeah, think, we, but you can literally top up your phone at like what? Like grocery stores. You can absolutely can. You can top up your phone at a grocery store in the UK. But in America, it's just like this giant rigmarole, and they charge you your contract really high no matter if you own the phone or not. Like it's like if you own the phone unlocked versus like payment plans, I don't think there's a giant price discrepancy. And the whole carrier thing – and, and then it's about relationships and stuff too. It's Microsoft has to build a relationship with Verizon. That they build a re- and now T-Mobile's all sour to Microsoft. It's just a big mess, and it, yeah, I hate it. So Phil in the comments says, "18 T-Mobile and T-Mobile are GSM. All UK carriers are GSM too. So Verizon and Sprint are using the other um, technology, I guess. Yeah, but, but the radios are in the phone. Here's my question. My question is, why are there companies in America using a different technology? They probably think it's better, but... But why? It's... There's a, already a standard that everybody in the whole world is using. Why use something different and then differentiate yourself that way? Well, and then why would Microsoft... I'm pretty sure these devices have CDMA radios in them. I don't think they do. Maybe I they think do. they either did and they were disabled or they could have put them in there. I, yeah, I'm not sure. But So it's, you've got to have the bands in the hardware for it to run on the Verizon and Sprint. I mean, and we're bringing Sprint into this. I don't think Sprint had anything to do with it. Regardless, Sprint are using that technology as well. So I, technically, I guess it doesn't work on Sprint either, right? I guess not. I, so Why, yeah, I, mean, I just can't get my head around the fact that there, that there are companies in America, carriers, that went, you know what, we should use this completely different technology that nobody uses because why not? Yeah, I don't know. I I I, I agree. When I, when I left, uh, this is just turning into a rant here. It is. When I left the states and came to England, I and Leah told me this in advance. My girlfriend's from England, and she said phones are not as expensive here when it comes to monthly service. Um, what is gift gap a month? Like eleven or twelve pound? Well, I've got a fourteen pound one a month, which is four gig of data, unlimited. Four text. gigs of data for fourteen pound. Yeah, with un- with unlimited text and. I think like a thousand minutes or something. So in dollars, that's twenty bucks. Yeah, about it's about twenty bucks. Yeah, that's like no plans are that cheap. Almost no plans are twenty bucks in America for like even any amount of data. So that actually is like reliable. And and so the whole carrier thing, the pricing plans, they're all different. And it's 
but I actually think separate. I think my I think I'm a little off on Skype here, but um, I also think it's Microsoft. What are they doing? Not having this run on more. They should have pushed harder. I think T-Mobile can run them. Why didn't they go with T-Mobile? No, you're right. I, I don't get that. If the radio works. And T-Mobile CEO is doing these smarmy comments about, you know, they didn't talk to us or whatever. If they talk to us, whatever. Why wouldn't you push that too? People in America buy their phones through carriers. They don't go to a store. Here we go to car phone warehouse or you go to a mobile phone online or whatever, UK. Or what was it, mobile fund or whatever. There's all sorts of shops you buy things unlocked. In America, you can get that. You can buy a phone Best Buy or whatever. But a lot of people just buy it from the carrier. They walk in, they say, I need a phone. They go, here's your phone, it's on contract, here's the SIM, already done, bam. That's just how it works for a lot of people there. They need to work with that, but I don't, I don't understand. Not to mention Microsoft's headquarters are like 20 miles from T-Mobile headquarters. <laughs> just, go, just go knock on the guy's door and figure this out. See, again, we've got to circle it back to Microsoft, because Microsoft did make the decision to have it run AT&T only. As, as you said, T-Mobile were claiming that Microsoft didn't talk to them. Microsoft didn't. Microsoft yeah. wasn't, didn't that's care. That's what I mean. It's, it's just Microsoft. I, I, don't, I don't agree it's with It's mostly this. Microsoft, if they wanted to, they could have put the uh, the bands in the phones to have them run on Verizon and stuff as well. They chose not to on purpose. This is yeah. Microsoft's doing. All right. But let me say one thing, though, before we move on. I agree that Microsoft was the one, you know, a big person in this. They also may have not approached Verizon because Verizon hasn't sold their phones the way that they liked. I would point that out as well. Maybe Microsoft felt like Verizon doesn't push the phones correctly. I would also say that in the response to this person, Verizon called the phone the Nokia or Nokia, because people are pointing out, I'm trying to pronounce it the British way, but the Nokia Lumia 10. That's what they called it. They did. And they kept referring to Microsoft as Nokia. As Nokia. Like... Look, if Microsoft didn't approach you, that's cool. But like, well, you're going to brush so much of a cold shoulder, you're going to pretend you don't even know their name. Yeah, it's like, it's uh, like you run into someone that you knew from secondary school and it's just like, what, Jim? And they're like, I'm a woman. My, my name is It's Jackal. funny because... You're like, oh, I'm sorry, whatever. At the top of the device, they say, thank you for referring to our office for this for review. The complaint, blah, 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 say that Verizon Wireless is restricting the availability of an unlocked Nokia Lumia 950 and 950 XL. So although they get the Nokia bit wrong, they do actually refer to it as the 950 and the 950 XL at first. Then all of a sudden they change it uh, for demand for instant smartphones. Verizon has chosen not to carry the Nokia Lumia 10. Where'd the 10 come from? <laughs> They're just pulling There's a 10 also, from nowhere. As a wise person has said before, there's three sides to every story. My side, your side, and the truth. Yeah. And with this, you don't know. It, Microsoft could have said we didn't like that it took them so long to roll out the denim update or the cyan update. It could have been we don't like how they sold the icon, so we didn't call them up. There's, there's, I'm sure there are details behind the scenes we don't know. I think they should have pushed more for at least TNT or, T, or not TNT. Sorry, that's TV network. At least T-Mobile, if not Verizon. But also Verizon. What are they doing? Calling it Nokia Lumia 10? Isn't it? No one is supporting that because it's not a real device. So it's just ridiculous, in my opinion. So anyway, you know it's more Ugh. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, actually, you're right. The next story might actually be better. <laughs> Steve Ballmer. That's who's ridiculous. Yeah, there you go, Mr. Steve Ballmer. So I'm not actually developers, fully developers, developers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ahead. not fully spec on this story. So I understand uh, Steve Ballmer has some additional feedback on Microsoft's current direction. Uh, so apparently Bloomberg did a report. Uh, Ballmer isn't so keen on every aspect of Microsoft Windows 10 mobile strategy. Uh, so he was talking about Satya Nadella, or talking to Satya Nadella, I'm not entirely sure. Well, it was the stockholders meeting, and he still owns it. I think he's the guy with the most stock in all of Microsoft right now. Well, I might be talking to him then, whatever. Steve Ballmer thinks that the universal, uh, Microsoft's universal app platform, the, the direction they're going, won't work. And he believes Android apps should be the way forward. Microsoft should enable Android apps on Windows phones. He actually said, for word by word, that won't work. Instead, the company needs to enable Windows phones to run Android apps. So that's what he thinks. Now, I know many people also agree with him. Microsoft needs to get that right, though. If they're going to run Android apps, they need to get it right. And it can't be as slow as it was on the preview builds. It needs to feel native. It needs to feel in the device. I don't want to open an app and and know or and see or feel like it's running in an emulator above it. I want to feel, and I know it will be, and it will, it will have to be, but I want to make, I want it to feel like it's native. Because Windows Phone is smooth. Windows Phone, 
I would say just works. <laughs> Even though Windows 10 is a little bit buggy right now. That's kind of the experience you get. And imagine just switching between apps and all that good stuff and then coming up to an Android app and opening it and it, and it launches and says loading app or whatever or like the, the little bar it had when it was in the preview saying loading emulator or something and then the app would finally launch and set up and whatever else. That's just not, that's too clunky for most people. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure I could go off the handle or whatever. I, we don't need to fly. I think this is a bit of an odd comment because well, I, I wasn't on the Microsoft beat when Balmer was in charge. So I'm not going to claim that I covered it when it was happening. But I think some people would put some of the onus on Steve Ballmer on why we're in this situation in the first place, right? Yeah. I mean, wasn't he was in charge when they transitioned between Windows 7, like Windows Phone 7 and Windows Phone 8. And and then this like relationships with other developers and CEOs and whatever it's it's kind of I mean obviously there are some good things that he I don't I don't I, like I said I wasn't on the beat but it seems to me it's a bit odd there was such like a fumbled handoff from a popular operating system in Windows Phone seven to Windows Phone eight and eight point one it seems a bit odd that he's like oh I have this solution you know what I mean right like I'm not trying to be a jerk but I'm just saying it seems a bit odd to, for him to be giving advice on how to run Windows Phone. When he was part of a transition where it went from very successful to not as, to not very successful, seems a bit odd that he would be like, "Oh, I have this." Well, some of the comments pointed out if he had these ideas, why weren't they implemented when he was in charge? I, I was just about to say that. Why wasn't he doing this instead? Then I mean, if he really felt this, I mean, he feels this. Why didn't he do it before? Mm, exactly. You know, I, and like I said, I don't want to go on some. I wasn't. I don't know Bomber as well as I, I know Nadella's CEO ship quite quite a bit compared to Nadella's or to compared to Bomber's, but. If this is such a great idea, why wasn't it done before? You know, like why haven't we heard about this until now in ter- from him? And and when you were in charge of the entire company, why didn't this happen? And and so I, I don't know. It's very odd to me. Like it's I know Nadella has undone quite a bit of what Balmer did, and maybe that's some tension or whatever, because Balmer was taking the company in one direction, and Nadella has definitely moved it into another direction, but. It seems a bit odd to get this advice from Balmer on phones. See, I feel like Windows 10 Mobile, their mobile efforts will succeed more. I mean, it's all about timing. Timing to the market. They need to get a product out there that's ahead of the curve. Because Windows Phone, ever since its initial launch, was always playing catch-up. With Windows Phone 7, it was playing catch-up to iOS and Android, whatever it was at the time. Windows Phone 8, playing catch-up to iOS and whatever Android was at the time. Windows Phone 8.1, playing catch-up again, adding a notification center, tiles, um, folders on the start screen, all that, you know, playing catch-up. Windows 10, playing more catch-up with these new apps and interactive notifications and whatever else it's got now. They need a, pro- they need a version of Windows and a t- device that's ahead of the, uh, of the market, of, ev- of what's current. Because every single release they've had so far is always playing catch-up in one way or another. If they can get a version out that's just new entirely and just is perf- and great and whatever else, then they'll be onto something. It's not just about the app gap. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this at, at infinitum when it comes to mobile. <laughs> but yeah, they want to be ahead. Continuum is their idea of being ahead. Intel support on phones is their idea of being ahead. That's what they want. I, I, I'm not saying it's going to work. I think it will, but I, I think uh, you can't just have a phone anymore. iPhones, I, we've talked about this before, but iPhones are pretty good. Like, let's just be honest. iPhones, Galaxies, uh, Sony Xperia, good phones. Y- you can't out phone some of those phones. I mean, some of those phones are really solid devices running good operating systems. You might not like it. I prefer the tile interface, whatever. But let's just admit, when it comes to making a smartphone, there are some really good ones on the market. And if Microsoft, all they can do is come out and say, we now have a smartphone that's a really good smartphone. To be like, yeah, I know, I'm holding one already. I've had it for a year and a half. <laughs> you can't, they have to say, we have a smartphone plus a PC or plus something else. It does something. You have to offer something that isn't already on the market. And so that's why the universal platform is important. It might not work. But if it doesn't work, I don't know what will. If the universal app platform five years from now has failed, I don't know what Microsoft is going to do. I don't know if maybe we won't even have the podcast. In five years, if nothing's happened. We won't even happened, have the podcast anymore. If, if nothing's happened, Microsoft will probably just slow down their mobile efforts even more. I mean, Windows 10 won't be going away because Windows is Windows, right? On the desktop, it will always be king. 
regardless. But on the mobile platform, I imagine if it's not working in five years, they will slowly phase it out because they could. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, speaking of operating systems that uh, that didn't end up too well, <laughs> Windows RT has actually made a reappearance on our show. Did, didn't we say that once we mentioned it that last time about Update 3, we wouldn't mention it ever again? We did, but now it's on a phone, so... <laughs> Go, on then, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so Windows RT was hacked onto a phone. Um, that's about it. It was onto a Lumia 1520, and the, um, it was hacked into running Windows RT in our headline, <laughs> because why not? It wasn't a 1520, it was a 520. I, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's a 520, good correction, thank you. So, yeah, um, that's about it. It's, it's running it. It's kind of weird. It looks... <laughs> it's just a cool little thing, really. I mean, yeah, it's just somebody it wouldn't hacked. ever be it's kind of... practical in any way. Uh, but uh, the guy who actually did it actually tweeted a little bit about it. Let's see if I can find some of his tweets and see what he said. So it's the Windows RT um, something. He says he has to reboot every time he wants to check something. Most of the drivers show, but no touch. He doesn't have any touch on it yet. So that's not working. But most, he said most of the drivers do work, which is very interesting. He hasn't. Yeah. I don't think he's said anything about it since. No, he hasn't. So whether he's given up or just waiting for something so we can plug a mouse into it i don't know but yeah i don't, I don't know what the, like you said i don't know what this accomplishes i don't think anyone wants it but it's kind of cool oh I, I, ex- I would absolutely do it if 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 he releases how to do it or whatever but i wouldn't mind windows 10 tablet mode on a phone <laughs> like just like one of the start menu columns <laughs> yeah like that that could be that's what they could do someday like if the universal app platform and phones don't work in 10 years they could just make a phone and just have it run regular windows 10 <laughs> just like yeah whatever <laughs> and you have a button in the bottom and it would have phone mode tablet mode and like continuum mode or something like that but anyway i don't know you'd do this apparently why would you want windows rt on no, a phone? i would want it it's just that'd be something interesting to do yeah, i guess so yeah yeah there you go all right well there's about that Zach, you know a lot about the insider, how, how support cycles work. I, I know a bit about this story, but this yeah, yeah, yeah. to me, people are reading this a bit wrong. Can you clarify this a bit? Right, this always happens every single time. Every single Windows release, there's always an article that says when the support will end for it. And everybody always takes it as if it's the end as well, that Microsoft is going to give up on whatever. No. Every version of Windows has a mainstream support life cycle. Now, this isn't an infinite life cycle. There is a time in which Microsoft will support a version of software. So for Windows 10 Mobile, that date is from the 11th, uh, sorry, the 16th of November 2015 and will end on the, I guess, the 8th of January 2019. And that's just how, that's how it works for every version of Windows. Windows 7 had a similar thing, but then it gets extended life support for like however many years after that. Windows 8 was the same, Windows 10 desktops is the same. Windows 10 Mobile is the same. It's got, I guess, four years. Of, of mainstream support and then the support will be over but people could forget that this is only talking about windows 10 mobile right now uh the current release of windows 10 mobile there will windows 10 now is a rolling update it's on a rolling update thing there'll be new updates every year whatever else with these new major updates comes new support because that's just how well microsoft although then microsoft isn't treating these major launches as a major launch anymore deep down they still are and microsoft still has to do all the same things all the license agreements all of that, all you know, the legal stuff. They've all got to go through the same process. They've all got to do it because Microsoft pretty much do this to, just to, you know, to cover their backsides in case in twenty thousand years down the line someone opens up a box of Windows XP and goes, Microsoft isn't supporting this anymore. I can sue them because they haven't clarified that, or they, or they didn't tell me beforehand when I bought it that it, the support would end one day. See, that's what that's what they're covering themselves for. And so this is what that is. But if you upgrade to Redstone, then that, that support date will be extended and so on and so forth. If you upgrade to Bluestone or, you know, Blackstone in three or four years. How many stones are they going to do I here? don't know. It's just off the top of my head. <laughs> and then that that support date gets extended. So Microsoft has added a note here. I'll read it out. Microsoft will make updates available for the operating system, including security updates for a minimum of 36 months after the life cycle start date. These updates will be incremental with each update built on the update that preceded it customers need to install each update in order to maintain support uh in order to remain supported the distribution of these incremental updates may be controlled by the mobile operator or by the phone manufacturer from which you purchased your phone and will inst- and will and installation will require you your will require that your phone have any prior updates update availability will also vary by country region and hardware capabilities so it's the same story every time nothing to worry about 
Yeah, I think some people are reading into this too. I think the tenor of some of these articles and people commenting on it is that like somehow this indicates Windows 10 Mobile is ending, and it's not. No, like it's just not. That's not what it is. It's just support for the current version. Redstone will come out of a re- you know rollover or whatever. Yeah. Um, if anything, can I twist this to meet my own agenda? This actually shows that Microsoft's not giving up on Windows 10 Mobile until 2018. No, yeah, twenty nine. Because people said it was dead and it might be dead on arrival. Said, so, well, at minimum, they're at they're guaranteeing support until twenty eighteen. So now we know Windows ten Mobile not going anywhere to twenty eighteen. They might only make one phone a year. They might just make the one phone, but they're going to support it till twenty eighteen. So there you go. I don't want to hear any more about they aren't supporting phones because it's guaranteed through twenty eighteen. There you go. <laughs> End of story. That's that. Moving on. Moving on. Exactly. So, Zach, you know how we always talk about how Microsoft manages to do new things with hardware that's been around for a really long time? Yeah. They got Miracast onto an Xbox, that sort of thing? Yeah. Well, they've done it again, and it has to do with the Xbox. So the Kinect has done two new cool things this week. Uh, one was directly from Microsoft, but it's still in beta or beta form. The other one I think people just used a Kinect for, and I thought it was a cool story. So Microsoft is working, and they've gotten the Kinect to do Windows Hello on a PC, which is pretty legit. Now, I guess, are the drivers still in beta? Is that what you were saying before? Yeah, they're still in beta. So there's some things still in beta, but they use the Kinect, I think, Kinect, which... Kinect you know, 2. Yeah, it's the Kinect. It can't be, yeah, it can't be Gen 1 Kinect, but the Kinect 2, and there's like a how-to do it. It's kind of a bit of a... It's a hack, even though Microsoft's giving you instructions on how to hack it, right? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be. Oh, I wouldn't say it's a hack. To set up your it's registry just something you, yeah, you set up. So, so, you want to read them out, I guess? I guess. I no, mean, I don't think it's on the article. No one's going to read no I'll link to it. to it, like, whatever. <laughs> Basically, there's a walkthrough on how to actually do this. But that's pretty cool, because then you can use the Kinect instead of that Intel RealSense camera. You probably have a Kinect laying around. I do. I know you use it on your Xbox, but a lot of people don't. And they may have bought the Xbox One when it was still bundled with the Kinect. Or maybe they got it with the Kinect thinking they'd use it, but don't care anymore. You can buy a cable adapter, or if you're just using the V2 for PC or whatever, bam, now you got a Windows Hello phone, or a camera, which is exactly what you want. Wake up your PC. You can now have a camera that's this big <laughs> on, <laughs> on top of your PC, and it'll unlock with your face. So there you go. Pretty cool. Are you going to try that out? Should uh, you have uh, I don't really need to. I've got a PC. Oh, you got the real sense, yeah. I guess. And also, just like little fun things, with the, um, to prove that Kinect's actually useful, but not in gaming so much, uh, some people use Kinect to help out with x-rays. It tells them like the thickness of things, and then to help them know if kids are moving or, or, or people getting x-rays are moving. And then the Kinect can help them get better photos, which shows to me that, as I said, the Kinect can be useful, but probably its main purpose is going to be away from gaming. It's going to be... You know, all the other stuff that it does. So there you go. That's it for the Kinect. Cool stuff, Microsoft. Who knows? Someday, the Xbox One might actually support the graphics that we always wanted. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> they'll, say, they'll say we had the hardware the whole time. Yeah. We just couldn't figure it out with the software. Because what was the game you were tweeting about that you got? Oh, Just Cause 3. I was so looking forward to Just Cause 3. <laughs> but it runs like poop on the Xbox One, apparently. So, uh... Yeah, there you go. Maybe someday. Maybe someday, Zach, they'll roll out an update and say, now we can do 1080p 60 frames per second. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> oh, so there you go. Well, that's about it for this week, Zach. Do you have any other stories or whatever? I do not. I guess you can just wrap us up and we do the after I show. Should. So, yes, that was the Win Better podcast for the week of December 4th, 2015. Sean Michael, one of your co-hosts, you can follow him on Twitter at... Sean underscore Michael underscore UK. And you can follow me on Twitter, Zach, at Zach B underscore... Follow WinBeta on Twitter at WinBeta, D-O-T-O-R-G. On Facebook at WinBeta.org. Not at, it's facebook.com forward slash WinBeta. There we go, yeah, yeah. Google Plus, just search for us. YouTube, subscribe. You're probably watching this on YouTube, so just press subscribe. If you're listening to us, then... <laughs> if you're watching this on something other than YouTube, please let us know, because someone's pirated a copy. Yeah, someone's not <laughs> uploading without us permission. Which would be... Daily Motion, let us know. <laughs> or Vimeo. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, anything else I need to say? Have I forgotten? No, that's good. All right, so thanks so much for watching, guys, and we shall see you next week. Bye bye.